Good evening, everybody. I'm trying to restrain myself. You know, I get told that I'm over the top, so I'm going to be more genteel. How's that word? Genteel. I don't know how I'm going to manage to be genteel. But hey, great to see you. Welcome, welcome. It's been a, a, a long week, been a great week. My beloved went and did her learners for her car and the motorbike, one after the other. How's that? She passed both. Ooh, so excited. Yeah, nice to see you. As you know, we're coming to you live from X Cafe on Koh Samoy, and this is 15 minutes with Uncle Russ. That's my wife talking in the background while I'm going live. It is what it is. Okay, I'm going to sing us a little old school song. I know, I know, I know. It's an old school song. But I love it because it's got that whole ching, 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 chicka, 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 you know, the old ring, ting, ticka, ting. Yes, the ring, ting, ticka, ting. He poured in the oil and the wine. <laughs> the kind that restoreth my soul. He left me bleeding and dying on the Jericho Road. But he poured in the oil and the wine. Hey. Okay. He poured in the oil and the wine. The kind that restoreth my soul. They left me bleeding and dying on the Jericho Road. But he poured in the oil and the wine. Singing glory! Singing glory, glory, glory to His name forever. Glory, glory, glory to His name. Singing glory, singing glory, glory, glory to His name forever. Glory. I know you, you, you trendsetters and all of that said, oh, Russ, come on, man. That's not even old school. It's like Noah's Ark school. Yes. Yeah. What can I say? I like it. Okay. So I have a story for us once again. Now, this, I wonder if you should tell you my other story first. Which first show you the picture. Okay, now I'll show you the picture first. There we go. The one, the one that got away. <laughs> so, uh, listen, I'm not stereotyping fishermen, but you just happen to be part of the story today. In my humble opinion, I think that fishermen rank pretty high as being some of the best storytellers. Now you take that any way you want to, as in just a story, or is it a story? Yeah. Especially to the one that got away. In fairness, now come on, we do, we judge them. And yet we're not actually in a position because we weren't there, we can't, you know, confirm or refute. We can't say, oh, it's not a true story. You don't know. You weren't there. I mean, I remember some years ago, a friend of myself, Dave, we saw this black object coming along and we were standing down at Veggie's Beach in Durban after we had a paddle. And I thought it was one of the divers that had passed away a few days before. But no, it was a whale. Thankfully, although we never had the camera, thankfully there were witnesses there so that one didn't get away. In fact, we paddled 1.2 meters away. We could literally touch the whale with our paddle. Yes, but that's another story. So, and then another cool story is my friend Raymond Menezes. Man, this guy loves fishing. 
So he proceeds to tell me his story. He goes out in his, surf, uh, in his fishing ski. I think he said about five k's. I stand, I stand to, to correction. But I know it was out there to ship in there. Anyway, he hadn't caught anything the whole day and he decided to start heading back. And as a last resort, he thought, I'll throw one more line. Yeah, that was not a good idea. Anyhow, this thing, because he wasn't sure in the beginning, this thing hooks him. And he realizes, now listen, this guy, I promise he's an up and up guy. I'd go to war with that guy. Honestly, he's, he's like, he's an up and up. And what happens? He, he decides that this one is not going to get away. So he holds on for dear life. And this massive fish, it, it, it was a tuna, starts pulling him out to sea. <laughs> and he thinks, you're not going to be the one that got away. Anyhow, a whole battle ensued this way, that way, that way, and that way. And eventually the fish, fish tired and he, he pulled the fish alongside, but he couldn't put it onto the fishing ski. I mean, it's, you know, it's got a little hatch. Imagine trying to put a massive tune in there. <clears throat> Long story short, as he gets closer and closer, sun's going down, super excited, can't wait to show everybody his fish. Yes, and then a little Johnny. Actually, it couldn't have been a little Johnny because the thing took it off and all he had was the head. And I said to him, you know what, Raymond, that story is so reminiscent of the old man and the sea. But that was a true story, and I believe him because one thing Raymond does, he tells the truth. He's a bit cuckoo with catching snakes and scorpions. And Anybody knows Raymond, you know. When he comes running to you all excited and smiling, drop what you're doing, turn around, and run as fast as you can. Yeah. Okay. So, here's my question. Are we prone to exaggeration? You know, we got a little story, but we, it's like so boring. Everybody's got a better story. So what we do is we spice it up a little bit. A little bit of exaggeration. And, hey, you know, hey, you should have checked. You know, you come in and you've got two blue eyes and your lips swollen, your nose is broken. And the guy says, hey, Russ, what happened to you? Bro, you should see what the other guy looks like. Man, I gave him such a running slap, you have no idea. <laughs> really, where is he? I don't know, he's probably lying in intensive care somewhere. That's how bad I beat him up. But the reality is, I'm the one with the eyes shut, closed, the broken nose, and the thick lips. Every part of my body. I got beaten up like that once in the army by a guy by the name of Joe Ulifia. Never forget it. Became a good mate of mine afterwards, but he first gave me a proper hiding. So yeah, there you go. But now, what I want to talk about is the one that didn't get away. There's this true account of it, and it's in the Bible. Because that one didn't get away because it had a role to fulfill. So I'm going to read it to us. It's in Matthew chapter 17, verse 24 to 27. Peter and his master paid their taxes. When they had come to Capernaum, those who received temp temple tax came to Peter and said, Does your teacher not pay temple tax? He said, Yes. And when he had come into the house, Jesus anticipated him, saying, What do you think, Simon? For whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes? For their sons or from, from their sons or from strangers? Peter said to him, From strangers. Jesus said to him, Then the sons are free. Nevertheless, let's not, lest, we overfend, <laughs> lest we offend them, go to the sea, cast in a hook, and take the first the fish that comes up first. Very specific. And when you have opened its mouth, you will find a piece of money, take it, take that, and give it to them for me and you. Now you think, okay, so it's just a story. Well, I, I like the little facts behind things. So I went to do some research. How, firstly, firstly, how did the fish get to swallow the coin? And 
It was a four drachma coin. You say, oh, come on, Bryce, you're just guessing that. Maybe. But listen to this. The four drachma or shekel coin would be exactly enough to pay the temple tax two drachma coin for two people. He said, the first fish that you catch, open its mouth and you'll find a coin and you will pay your taxes. Am I? For me and for you. That's one clever fish to carry the exact coin, be in the exact place, given the fact that the preferred method of fishing was nets. But anyhow, you took a hook. There's a fish just going along, minding its own business. Probably a banker fish. A mass bunker. <laughs> yeah, if you don't understand Afrikaans, or you're not from the Cape, you're not going to know what a mass bunker is. But it's like a banker. <laughs> Sorry, so stupid. Where did you get that sense of humor from? It, was usually, it, was, it is usually thought to be a Tyrian shekel. And a Tyrian shekel was worth four drachmas. And each one had to pay two. But here's the thing. Somebody was out of pocket for four drachmas. Yes. I mean, he was probably fishing and leant over and bloop, there goes the coin and a fish comes along and swallows it and swims along. And at the instant, as Peter casts, now imagine when he gets back and he starts telling Guys, you will not believe what happened today. Let's say, what, Peter? Because, you know, Peter was a little bit here and then all over the place. Okay, Peter, what happened? Man, you know, the, the guys were hustling me about the temple tax and, and whether Jesus pays tax or not. And Jesus says to me, hey, Jesus, is it true? You, you told me, huh? Yes. Anyhow, let me tell you the story. So, so Jesus says to me, Peter, go over there, go down to the sea, Cast, throw a hook, and the first fish you catch in its mouth, you'll find a coin. Take that coin and pay the taxes for me and you. Nah, come on, Pete. How can a fish swallow a coin? And how much was it? Nah, it was four drachmas. Oh, come on. Come on, Peter, you know it. You're a difficult guy to believe because you, I think maybe you got bipolar or something because you're all over the place. That's what I think, and that's just my personal opinion. They were thinking, this Pete, he's like, and he's saying, Jesus, tell them. That's true. So, Jesus, how did you know that the, the fish was going to be there at the time and have the exact money? I wonder what Jesus said to him. He probably said what he's been telling them all along. If you have seen the f me, you have seen the Father. That means I'm God. Emmanuel, God among you. But they were still like me. So, there's another one that didn't get away. And this time it wasn't a fish. And, oh, oh, okay, sorry. So, was it a whale? Was it a fish? Was it a gnarl perch? I don't care. The Bible says to me that this person was swallowed by a fish. Now you want to get all technical? You do that. But for me, he was swallowed by a fish. So he thought that he got away. Hey, God says to him, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh and get them, tell them to get their life sorted out. And Jonah's thinking, no, I don't want to do that. I know you. I know, you. I know you're a good God. So what you're going to do, you're going to end up forgiving them and having grace upon them when they actually deserve to die, like badly. They should get what's coming to them. So he thinks, okay, so God says, I want you to go to Tarshish, the place of the fish. Don't say you knew that. That's, that's what Tarshish means, the place of the fish. So he goes to the place of the fish. No, he's supposed to go to the place of the fish. Tarshish. Uh, beg your pardon. He's supposed to go to Nineveh. Nineveh. Russell, get the story right. He's supposed to go to Nineveh. But he goes to Tarshish, the place of the fish. And what happens? Yes, the unbelievers realize that the problems that they're in, it's him. 
And he says to them, okay, guilty. Throw me overboard. So he still thinks he's going to get away. No. He gets swallowed by the whale, stroke fish, stroke whatever you want to call it. And he spends three days in amongst all that rotten guts and ugh. <laughs> and then he gets spat out. Seaweed wrapped over his head. looked like a human sushi. Yeah, and he stank like one as well. But you see, he never got away. The fish stroke whale, and again, I keep saying the stroke because I know you, you, you're not going to question. The creature that swallowed him was in the exact place at the right time to fulfill the purpose that it was called to do. Number one. When God tells you to do something that's seemingly ridiculous, like go and cast a hook in the ocean and the first fish that you catch, you'll find a coin in its mouth. Pay your, go pay your tax and mine. Go do what you're supposed to do to your government. Stop evading taxes. Stop doing all those funny things. Pay your tax. And the other thing is pay your tithes. And your offerings. You see, you give to God what belongs to God, and you give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Okay, the first one. The second one is, if God's called you to do something, it doesn't matter what the state of the people or person or situation is, the only thing you have to do, I have to do, is obey. Like where I live now. 95% Buddhists, 4.6% Muslim. That's a 0.4% other. Now, you see, I could go, actually, Lord, that makes no sense whatsoever. I would prefer to go and minister in China. Thank you very much. But I don't want to go where you're sending. And a few people said to me, do you realize the danger as a single person <laughs> to go minister in that place? I didn't care. And we mustn't care what people say or what people want to do. When God calls you to do something, just do it. Amen? And you will be so pleasantly surprised because it becomes easier and easier to fulfill the task that you're called to do because what He does, He prepares everything in advance for you. And as we walk through the stages in our obedience, He unfolds everything that's already going to happen. You see, like with Peter, Jesus knew exactly how much money is needed to pay the taxes. Hmm. God knew exactly that Jonah was trying to run away and not obey him. There you go. So, Who are you in the picture? Are you the fisherman? Check it. How cool is it? I found a fish with money in its mouth. Okay, it's, it's, it's not the four drachmas. I must admit, it's got dollar in it. Where, where are we in the picture? Are we the fisherman? Are, the, are we the fish trying to get away? Are we the one swallowing the person that's trying to get away? You see, everything Everything has a purpose according to God. Everything. doesn't matter what we think or what we do and how we try and escape. All we need to do is to obey the true and the living God. Amen? Please, don't forget that if you need any prayer or you need us to stand in agreement with you or you need to pay something and you need that fish to be over there, we'll pray for the fish to come exactly there at the time. Or if you're busy running away and you're not being thrown overboard and you get rescued by a fish stroke whale and you feel spat out and rejected and all forlorn, all grumpy. doesn't matter. We want to pray with you. We want to stand with you. Bless you. Thank you so much for your time. Until we meet again, this is Uncle Russ signing off. And if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window.
Bye-bye and God bless.